Hello everyone and welcome back to Emkin Gardening. Today we have a very exciting project um, to show you. We are going to be redoing our front flower bed. And this is a very interesting flower bed because um, it's very skinny. So it's only about a foot and a half deep by about 25 feet long. So it's not a traditional flower bed in how you're going to arrange it and um, set up structures and everything. So we'll show you kind of how we have done it in the past and what we're going to do this year. But first I wanted to show you the remnants of our tulips. So in the very early spring we had um, big ups tulips from color blends we love color blends we get our tulips and our daff daffodils from color blends the big ups had a nice red and orange and yellow they grow really big um, and these are flowers that will come back every year so we really enjoyed the show that they put on at the beginning of the spring and now it's time to move on to something else so the first thing we're going to do is show you how we're going to cut them down <laughs> um, so it's pretty basic you know you can absolutely see the ones that are totally dead they are ready to be pruned back um, they have sucked up as much energy as they can it's down in the bulb underground um, so we're going to cut just above and we're going to leave a little stalk and this is a good um, just reminder for us when we're planting other things that there is a tulip bulb right here. So not to, uh, or try not to disturb it when we're planting other um, annuals in this bed. Um, you will see tulips like this that still have the green leaves. Um, it's, you know, they're just now starting to get a little bit yellow, but I'm gonna leave the foliage on this type of tulip for a little bit longer because um, it's still sucking up energy to put into the bulb for next spring. Um, it needs to suck up as much as it can from the sunlight to get a bloom for next spring. So I'm actually just going to come in and cut off the spent bloom stock on this one. But I'm going to leave the foliage probably for like another week um, and then just come in and, and um, snip it. So that's the first step we're going to do with this flower bed is to just remove all of the, the browning and yellowing um, tulips, leaving the ones that can still suck up some energy for the bulb um, and then we'll move on. We have a lot of information to show you guys. Um, so. That was super quick. We just uh, cut off all the dead ones and left the tulips that still had some nice green leaves that are still soaking up um, that energy for next year's blooms. Um, I wanted to quickly explain what we typically do in this bed. Um, we have roses on either side. We have like a horizon knockout rose and then we have proven winners at last roses on the other side. And that kind of just like flanks and borders this bed. And previous seasons, we would do the back line, so the line closest to the fence, all zinnias, um, the fair, state fair mix, once they get like three feet tall, um, three to four feet tall, we would line the back with those, and then in the front, we would put supertunia vistas. Um, and it is amazing every single year. We love zinnias because you know they're cut and come again flowers, so you can just keep cutting them for arrangements, and they're just going to continuously bloom. Wonderful, wonderful flowers. Um, and then with our vistas, as you know, they get massive and just full of blooms as well. But we had the budworm issue for the past couple years, and so we wanted to try something new. So we will be doing something new this year. 
bed. What's also really fun about our front flower bed, and I feel like it's very serendipitous, is that um, there's something new that volunteers itself every season. So last year we had um, z random zinnias from the previous 2020 year pop up randomly in the bed, not on that back row. And zinnias are not an uh, perennials for us. So that was very much f free zinnias and they were wonderful and they grew super big just like they do every year. Another volunteer thing that happened last year were cherry tomatoes. And we'll show you those in a second. So we had cherry tomatoes randomly start growing in this bed. And we didn't, again, cherry tomatoes are not perennials for us, but um, we found out that if somehow probably a bird must have gotten a cherry tomato and dropped it in the bed, and when it sits there and then like leaf mulch goes on top in the fall, all of those seeds grew. So we had cherry tomatoes last year. This year we have sunflowers growing. Um, and these look like mammoth sunflowers. We had volunteer sunflowers in our courtyard last year. So again, I'm assuming that a bird came and when they were harvesting the sunflower seeds from that volunteer mammoth, sunflower in the car in the courtyard they accidentally dropped them in this bed um, so we have so many volunteer sunflowers and it's I don't know how it worked out but there's like a grouping over here right by the rose and on the other side we'll show you in a sec there's a grouping of sunflowers right by the other rows chef's kiss. Perfect. Then I wanted to show you the volunteer cherry tomatoes that we got again this year. Let's check them out. So this is what they look like. And again, these were from cherry tomatoes that had dropped at the end of the season, um, got squished and, you know, but somehow made it into the soil. Mulch, you know, our leaf mulch went on top in the fall. And now we have several, like one, two, three, four, four cherry tomato plants. So we love like the cottagey look of flower beds. So we're gonna keep these. We're gonna have flowers surrounding them, but we're gonna continue to have the cherry tomatoes um, because it's free produce and why not? So. These are gonna stay. We also have um, neighbors that come by and we'll pick off of them too, which we love sharing, all that stuff. So these will stay. I wanted to quickly show you the grouping of sunflowers that's on the other side, and then I'll talk about the plants that we're going to be planting in this year. So just like before, somehow miraculously, we got a grouping of these mammoth sunflowers right here in front of our at last roses. Um, so just really fun and um, I'm excited to to see what they do okay so here are the flowers that we're going to be planting this year instead of doing supertunia vistas which we experienced the budward worm problem with last year and the year previously we're gonna try um, the lobularias from proven winners so we have a different selection we have and the pollinators love them we have a lot of honeybees around. Yay! So we have Moonlight Night um, Lobularia. It's a sweet alyssum. Has more of a yellow, I'm not sure if you can see it in this light, has more of a yellow tint. We have Violet Night Lobularia. And we have two, um, we have Snow Princess and White Night Lobularia. So the sweet alyssums have that wonderful, sweet, um, it reminds me of graham crackers, that kind of smell. And these will get a foot tall and two feet wide. So they will take up a, oh yeah, I know it smells good. Yeah, um, it'll take up quite a big of, bit of space. And this is going to be on the border, um, the front part of the flower bed kind of spilling into our grass front yard. So that's the selection we have for the front. And we'll probably do some kind of pattern um, 
with them to like spread them out a little bit. For the back, instead of zinnias, we're gonna try dahlias this year. And these are in tube forms. Um, we got these pretty early in the season, like around February. So we're going to see what condition they are in and how many are viable to plant. And we'll go through um, the different parts of a dahlia in this video as well. So we'll see which ones are viable and maybe some of them aren't because we got them so early. And if not, we'll just pop some zinnias in those, those uh, places. Then at the end of each side of the flower bed, we're going to have a Proven Winners Toucan Coral. And so these are very tropical looking. They get four feet tall by almost three feet wide. They are um, re-blooming all through the season. They're heat tolerant, which is wonderful because uh, this is a full sun spot. And uh, they have these very tropical blooms. You can see the little spike buds about to pop and they're just going to continue to bloom. So we're gonna have that on the very outside by the roses. And then right, because you know, we didn't have enough sunflowers, um, we got uh, two Suncredible Saturn sunflowers. Uh, we have used Sun Credibles pretty much every year. We love them. They get really big. Um, they're just workhorses and they have just continuous blooms. You don't have to deadhead them because even when they're out of bloom, they still have their um, seed head, which to me looks like a really cute little fluffy brown pom-pom. And so it adds a little bit of a different kind of texture to the flower and kind of breaks up all of the um, blooms. So you don't have to deadhead them at all in order to make them continuous, continuously bloom. They're going to do that no matter what. Um, and the difference with the Sun Credible and the Sun Credible Saturns is the Saturns have this nice um, rusty orange ring on the inside and kind of gives it a better depth um, into the bloom. They're just very interesting and I love them. I love sunflowers. So these ones are going to go on the inside of the toucan corals. So we're going to place them and then we'll show you what it looks like when they're all placed and then how we're going to plant it because Ryan has something special up his sleeve on how to plant. Okay, so they're all placed. Um, you can see the lobularia in front, the toucan, coral, and the some credible Saturns going from the inside. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but the some credibles get three feet by three feet. So these guys will be Just kind of touching and filling in this whole area. This is the proposed idea of the line of dahlias. These are dinner plate dahlias so they're going to have that really big bloom um, and you can just cut, cut, continuously cut them like a zinnia um, and they will continuously re-bloom throughout the summer all the way until fall. They all get three feet tall um, so it's going to be nice. You're going to see them right above the fence line. It's going to be beautiful. When we do plant, we use um, an auger because um, it is significantly easier to plant mass plantings in a flower bed with a tool. So we have our De DeWalt drill and then attached to it is an auger and we're going to link this auger down below in case you wanted to switch your planting styles from bending over to dig with a shovel to just standing and drilling the hole, drilling the hole, drilling the hole. You'll see it, it goes so fast. Um, and it's how we've been planting for a couple years now and it just makes everything so easier. You're not breaking your back. Um, it's wonderful wonderful so we'll link this auger down below um, and you can just attach it to your drill and the tr and then charge the batteries before we start planting I just wanted to go over um, what the dahlias look like to show you how you know where to plant those coming closer 
Okay, so I wanted to quickly just show you um, the, the picture of what the dinner plate dahlias will look like. This is called Dazzling Magic. We have Prince of Orange. We have, oh goodness, Romantique. And we have Catching Fire. I like that one. And our yellow one is um, Cambridge. It has like specks of red or orange looks like. And Ryan picked out all of these because he is my flower man. And he has the best eye for colors. And you can see all of these pictures. Um, there's like a comparison of uh, the child next to the size of the flower bloom so that gives you a good indication of how big these blooms will get Okay, so I just opened up one of my bags. This is the dazzling magic And I wanted to show you what a tuber will look like and each tuber can have like a bunch of tubers can have um, several different tubers on it and you can actually separate these each one of these tubers can be its own dahlia plant. Um, we will not be doing that right now. We're gonna just plant the whole thing in the ground. Um, but I wanted to show you a close up on the body parts. And you can tell that there is obviously is growth happening. So this one will grow. But I wanted to show you kind of, um, there, there is actually a lot of damage on this. So, so dahlias have uh, three parts that are important. You have the body, which is like the bulbous part, the neck, which you can tell right here, this one is broken. It's the, it turns into a skinnier tunnel and attaches to the top. And then there's an eye, which is where the plant starts growing from. And you can obviously tell where the eye is because the plant is growing from it. Um, but there's clearly, one of these tubers are clearly attached because it's growing, but a lot of them, most of them are broken. I think this one is the one that's attached. It's a little bit more secure on there. So this is what I'm talking about. So we're gonna plant this because we know that it is growing. Um, and you have to be super delicate with dahlia tubers because of this exact thing, um, because they can break so easily. So we will be super careful. And let's see if the other one in here is intact or has promising features. Looks like something's growing. So the other one had those long skinny tubers. They can also look like this, nice and round and like potato-y um, too. But again, it has to have those three parts of so the body, the bulbous body, and it forms into that skinny neck and attaches to the top and then the eye is where um, the plant will grow from. Um, this has some type of growth happening. Yeah, so we'll see. There is some attached right here, so. We do have extras of these um, in case, oh, see that one broke right off. But you can see the neck a little bit how it gets a little skinnier, and then it would have attached right there at the top. So this is no good, you cannot use this. <laughs> um, so hopefully if these don't look very viable, we do have one extra that we can see if any of those work. So we'll just check it out, see which ones are good, be super gentle, and then um, we're gonna plant everything just like normal. We're going to drill the hole. We're going to put, we're actually going to put a little bit of fresh soil at the bottom, our biotone starter fertilizer, and then put the plants in, cover it up, put a little bit more fresh soil on top, and then at the very end we'll show you everything and we will water everything in. all the 
those holes. Right now we're going to go in with the fresh soil and the biotone starter fertilizer and then we're going to plant everything up. Everything is in and planted. I think there's only one dahlia tuber that I was iffy about. I couldn't find a any growth happening on the eye. So we'll see. We'll see about that one. If not, we'll just pop some zinnias in. Um, I put some um, hollyhock at the very end just to fill up a hole or two. So we'll see if that grows. Who knows? Um, but we love the um, look of this front flower bed, it draws in a lot of interest to our home, um, our street, and we have a lot of people who walk past our house, so having something that's just beautiful um, is wonderful in the summer. So if you liked this video, if this gave you ideas, if you're interested in um, planting dahlias or the sunflowers or the toucan cannas, the lobularia, using the auger, which again, we'll put that link down below if you wanted to check it out. Um, subscribe to our channel and you can comment down below if you have any questions. Um, and we hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha